Hey guys, it's Ernesto. Welcome back to another Monday Critique. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Monday. I'm having a great Monday. One thing, see this distracting cord here? I apologize. I outsourced my um, lavalier mic, so I have to go ghetto style to record this video today. We have two great images today to critique, and I can't wait to get into it. I'll see you guys after this intro. If you guys wanna submit your image to be critiqued, please join our Facebook group. It's called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. In that group, I created a specific thread where you could submit your images to be critiqued. Welcome back, guys. My lavender mic, I don't have it today. So apologies for the distraction. I hope the audio is okay. All right, let's get into this first image. This image was submitted by this gentleman. Thank you very much for submitting your image. All right, guys, let's jump into light. Light is very important. On any photo shoot that I go on, the very first thing I look at is what the ambient light is with respect to my subject. I don't care about anything else. Location doesn't matter. That's right, for me, I don't care where I shoot with respect to the location. All I care about is what the light is. If I have a great background, a great location, but I have terrible, terrible light, I will not shoot there. I once put a couple next to a garbage can at a wedding and then folks that was at the wedding were looking at me like I'm crazy. But all I cared about was the light. And that's what you guys should care about, the light. In this particular image, the light is not there. When analyzing this image, and if you look at the background, because when I was analyzing this image and I looked at the background, you will notice that there is some light on the water. And that light on the water is coming from the background. In this image, this young lady is being backlighted. And if she's being backlighted, what is required to help bring up the exposure on the subject because it looks like the creator of this image is exposing for the background. That's my suspicion. Because the subject is severely underexposed. So if she's underexposed, the two things that's required, I mean, you could use multiple things, but the two things that that's practical for me that I would use in this situation is a reflector or an artificial light, like a speed light, a flash, some kind of artificial light to help bring up the exposure in the subject. So you can use the reflector to help bounce some light back into the subject's face. That's one. The second thing that you could do is use the flash, the artificial flash, to help bring up the exposure on the subject. Now those two things that you introduce would also help solve another problem, which is the lack of catch lights. Now, I joke about catch lights a lot on these videos, like, you know, saying, you know, that's my favorite thing or whatever, but really and truly, uh, catch lights are very important, especially when you're doing a portrait, a close-up portrait. Without catch lights, it just makes the eyes appear a little bit dead. So what, with catch lights, it helps bring up the eyes and just add a little bit more life to it. So every time I take a picture, my goal is always trying to get catch lights in the subject's eyes. Even if I'm doing a group portrait, I still try to get catch lights. It's that important to me. Now, if it's impossible to get the catch lights, one of the things that I do is have the subject look down, look away, so that they're not looking directly into the camera. Now, that's in the case where I cannot get catch lights for whatever reason, whatever the situation is, 
that I can't get the cash fight. That's what I would have the subject do in that situation. So to wrap up with the light, in this particular image, I think the two solutions that I offer, which is the flash or the reflector, would help resolve the lighting issues in this image. Oh shit. Look where the light is. Chin down just a little bit. All right guys, let's get into this pose. So from a pose and perspective, the pose is fine as neutral. The only thing I wish that could have been added to this pose is just a little bit of the female shape. And that's all. So from that perspective, awesome job. So let me talk about the last thing that I wanted to address in this image. And that is the vertical lines in this image. Now, if she is holding the frame, which is what I suspect she is doing, maybe this is why the vertical lines in this image don't line up with the frame of your picture. If you look at the vertical lines on the window frame that the subject is holding, you will notice that it don't line up perfectly with the outer frames of your composition, of your picture. So when you're taking a picture with vertical lines, what you wanna do is to make sure that those vertical lines line up with the outer edges of your composition. So that's very important. So if it's not lined up, the image will appear a little bit wonky, you know, leaning either to the left, leaning to the right. So you want to make sure that those vertical lines, any vertical lines that you're taking a picture of, that it lines up with the outer portion of your composition. So your frame. So when you're looking through your viewfinder in your, on your camera, you want to make sure that those outer edges of your viewfinder is lining up with the vertical lines in your image. The same is also true for um, the horizon as well. Um, you want to make sure that those lines lined up and they're even. So if you have lines just like this, it's a problem. And if you have vertical lines just like this, it could be a problem. Now this goes back to my last video that I was talking about, which is why I do not use um, the Dutch angle when I have vertical or, or horizontal lines in my frame because it kind of makes it a little bit confusing. So for me, I don't know about anybody else, but it makes it a little bit confusing for me. But in general, what you wanna make sure that you do is make sure that those vertical lines are pretty even. And if you can't get it even in camera, you can easily, very easily fix that in post by simply putting it in Lightroom and lining it up and you will fix that really quickly. I don't know if you use Lightroom or Capture One, whatever you use, you can fix that very easily in post. But just bear in mind when you fix it in post, something will suffer. So if you have something really close to the edge of the frame and you crop it, you might lose that because when you line it up, it's basically cropping the image just a little bit just to help line up those vertical lines and horizontal lines, okay? I hope that was helpful. So now let's talk about the post-production in this image. From a post-production perspective, well, actually, before I jump into post-production, I just wanna make a quick disclaimer because I'm gonna talk about this later and I just wanna say that for me, my process, my computer is a MacBook Pro Retina. I think it's from a, tw it's a 2013 um, MacBook Pro. I never calibrated it. I edit all my images on that laptop and I never calibrated the monitor. So all the images that you have seen that I've taken, I guess from 2013 to now, all have been edited on that computer. And I never, never calibrated it. Now, I'm saying this not to say that you guys should not calibrate your monitors. You probably should. But for me personally, I never have. 
and I'll explain why I never have, okay? So now let's jump into this particular image and let's talk about the details about this image. So the first thing I notice when I look at this image is the white balance. The white balance is off. It's a little bit on the cooler or purple side um, for this particular image. There's a couple of things that you could do to help fix the white balance um, in post-production. And I'll talk about how you can fix it in post-production and how you can fix it while you are on the scene. Okay, so now that this image has already been taken, let's talk about how you can fix it in post-production. There's two ways you can fix the issues with respect to the white balance in this image. The first thing that you could do is using the scalara on the eye or otherwise known as the white part of the eye. You could zoom into that part of the eye you could use the white balance eyedropper, I think that's what it's called, um, in either Lightroom or Capture One, either one. There's a little dropper in there. I forget the exact name of it, but there's a little dropper in each one of those programs. And you can zoom into the eye, the scalara of the eye, which is also known as the white part of the eye, and zoom in and then put the color checker or the eyedropper on that white part of the eye. And if you do that, that will help bring the white balance a little bit closer to where it's supposed to be. Another way that you could do it using the exact same technique is just find a black area in the image, a true black area or a true white area or a gray area in your image. And you could click on any one of those areas, white, black, gray in your image and it will help color correct the image the way it should be on the day that you took that image. So another thing that you could do with respect to post-production is you could just make it black and white. You know, all else fails, make it black and white. If you don't think you have the white balance correct, just make it black and white. I mean, I mean, obviously that's a, that's a cop out, but you know, if you're not 100% sure, just make it black and white. And that's the best way to correct any color issues. It won't correct your lighting issues, but it would help you with your white balance issues, okay? So now let's talk about how you can get the white balance correct while you are on the scene. I follow a lot of photographers. I like to admire a variety of work and I like to get a lot of education from different people, okay? The reason I say that is because every single photographer that I know, follow, everything that I read, always said, you know, if you shoot in camera raw, that the white balance that you choose really, really doesn't matter, okay? That's because when you bring the image in post, you could change the white balance to whatever you want it to be. And that is 100% correct, okay? However, for me, when I'm on the scene, I tend to choose what my white balance should be with respect to that scene. And let me tell you what I mean. When I'm on the scene, I'm not colorblind, at least not to my knowledge, okay? So what I try to do, I view the scene, okay? And then I take a picture of that scene. I look at the back of my camera and then I look at the scene. If that image don't match the scene and it don't match what the subject looks like with respect to how I am seeing that person in front of me, then I manually adjust what my white balance should be to match that scene. Okay, and that's how I generally work. I continue to adjust that white balance until it matches the scene as close as I can get it, okay? And that requires working in Kelvin, that requires, you can use the presets on the back of the camera, um, you know, daylight balance, um, uh, tungsten, you know, use whatever it is, settings that you have to use in the camera to help calibrate 
your white balance to what it should be to match the scene. That is what I do when I'm on the scene because I don't want to come back and post to figure out what my white balance should be. So yeah, so that is just my workflow. I like to make sure that the white balance, the lighting, the posing, the composition, whatever it is, everything that I need for that particular image to be proper in camera by the time I upload it to my computer. So the only thing that I need to adjust when I'm in post, doing the skin work, adding color to the image to you know make it better, adding contrast and those kind of things. You know, the regular things that you would do in post-production to help enhance the image. And that's the only thing I would like to do in post-production. Do I get it 100% of the time? No, but I try to on every single photo shoot. So that is what I do with respect to the white balance when I'm on the scene. So that's what I'm suggesting that you can do if you wanted to on the scene. All right, so now let's talk about another way to correct your white balance, okay? Because if the way that I just described it is a little bit nuts or insane, I totally get it. It's a little bit too much, but that's just the way I do it, okay? So if that way is not working for you, it just, it just does not fit your workflow. One of the things that you could do is utilize a gray card. Now, when I started out photography, you, a use of a gray card, I didn't understand the concept. I didn't understand how utilizing a gray card would help you with your white balance. So let me talk about how that works, okay? So when utilizing a gray card, you first want to make sure, right, that the scene that you're going to put your subject in is lit exactly the way you envision the final product to be, okay? So if you're going to have five lights, one light, whatever it is, use a natural light, whatever it is, just make sure that the final product, the final image that you envision is lit the way you want to have it lit, okay? Once that's set up and that's all ready to go, you now introduce a gray card, okay? You then give that subject the gray card and you tell the subject to hold the gray card to close to their face. And then you take a picture of that subject with the gray card. After you take the picture with the subject and the gray card, you take the gray card back, okay? And then after you take the gray card back, you then proceed to create the image that you envision, right? That may be immediately another image after you take that gray card is the image that you wanted and you're done, or it may take you a couple of more shots to get to that final product, okay? Once you take all of the additional shots, if you then decide to introduce another light that has an impact on the subject or you decide to take away a light that will have an impact on the subject. If you change any light in that scene that will have an impact to your subject, you then need to introduce that gray card once again and take yet another picture, okay? Because that first picture you took with the gray card only will help you with that exact same lighting situation and all the images that you took after that initial gray card shot is only going to impact and correct the white balance for those images. But immediately when you change your light setup on the subject, then that initial gray card shot that you took is not going to have any impact to those images that you're going to take where the light setup was changed. So if you're going to change your light setup that's going to impact your subject, you need to introduce the gray card again and take yet another picture. And when you take that picture with the gray card in your subject, all the other pictures that you take after that, you can use that shot to help adjust the white balance for those images. Okay. So now what do you do with all these images with the gray card? Okay. So you would upload the images as you would into Lightroom, Capture One, whatever it is. You upload those images into that program 
you will take the eyedropper for the white balance and put it on the gray card and it would help correct that image with the gray card. And then once you correct that image with the gray card, you could then copy those settings on that image for the white balance to correct all the images that you took after that image with the gray card, okay? So once you do that, now all your images that you took after that initial image with the gray card will now be properly white balanced. So from that point, now you can make an artistic decision as to where you want to take the color in this image. Now, if you want to take it, you know, completely in a different direction, you could, you could do that. If you don't like the white balance, um, the corrected white balance, if you don't like that look, you could correct it. You can do whatever you want at that point in time, because now it's more of like an artistic decision. But if you want the proper white balance, that's the way you could get to the proper white balance. So I hope those little techniques help you with respect to the white balance. <sighs> that was much. So let's move on. One final thing I wanted to mention with respect to this image, and I'm only mentioning this because you said you are a new photographer. So I just wanted to show you visually where you could have take this image whether it be in post or while you were on the scene. So if you didn't understand anything that I said at the beginning, hopefully this visual representation will help you understand where I was going, okay? So what did I focus on with respect to your image? The first thing was the white balance. Now I'm not sure if I got the white balance 100% correct because like I said, my workflow is to make sure that the image matches my scene when I'm taking a picture so that when I upload the image to my computer, I know the white balance for, for the most part is correct. So I don't know if I got your white balance 100% correct, but I did follow the technique that I suggested, which is zoom in on her scalara, which is the white parts of her eyes, use the eyedropper to help figure out what the white balance should have been in that image. So that's what I did here, okay? The next thing that I did was to focus on the light, to bring up the exposure a little bit on the subject because she was severely underexposed. So that's the next thing that I did. The other thing that I did was focus on trying to get the catch lights. So she did have some sliver of catch lights in her eyes. So I enhanced that catch light in her eyes just a little bit more so I can add a little bit more life to the eyes. The other thing that I did here in this image was to remove her fingers because those fingers were a little bit distracted in the image. And then the last thing that I did was just to add a little bit of color just to play around just a little bit in the image, okay? So that's all I did in this image to help enhance it just a little bit more. I hope this visual representation helps you to understand what I was talking about and where you could take your image. So now when you go and do your next photo shoot, with these suggestions, I hope it is helpful. That is it. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that thumbs up button. Share this video with your friends and family. And please put some feedback down below and let me know what you think about this video. And guys, if you got this far in the video, you must be enjoying this content and you must be enjoying this channel. So go ahead. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next Monday.